Okie dokie, welcome to part four of our Space Invaders tutorial. So let's take a look at what we have so far. Okay, so we've got our player at the bottom. I can move the player left and right using the left and right arrow keys. I have one invader so far, one enemy, and that enemy moves right and left across the screen. When it reaches the border, it drops down towards our player. So now, uh, our player is not in a good position as uh, our player has no defenses. So what we need to do is we need to create uh, a weapon for our player and uh, allow the player to use that weapon. So let's uh, do our thing. We're going to basically create a separate turtle for our player. And we'll just call it a bullet. Um, so bullet, so I've created a turtle object and call it a bullet and I'm going to make the color yellow as you see I like primary colors uh, make the shape triangle that's a little bit more bullety and we don't want the bullet to draw a line, so we're going to bring the pen up. And of course, we want the speed to be zero, as fast as possible, the drawing speed. And just like with the player, we want the heading to be 90, because the, it's basically going to be pointing up towards the top of the screen. And now we don't want the bullet to be the same size as the player, so we'll make it half x width and half the y height. And let's just run that right there and see what happens. Heading, okay, okay, we gotta spell things correctly. Set heading. Okay, so our bullet is sitting up there. Doesn't do much, but that's what our bullet's gonna look like. So you can see we want the bullet to start here and head up to there. So let's get moving on that. Um, now, actually, when, when the game starts, we want the bullet to be hidden as well until we need it. Okay. So just like with everything else, our bullet's going to have a speed. So we'll call that bullet speed. And we want our bullet. Our bullet's going to move pretty fast compared to everything else. So we're going to set our bullet speed to 20. Okay. So just like before, we need to create a function. Uh, and bind it to a key. In this case, it's going to be the space bar. Okay. So the bullet is a bit more complicated than the other objects on the screen for, for one really important reason. Uh, it's that the bullet has multiple states. Okay, what I mean by that is that the bullet starts out hidden, but ready to be fired. And then when I fire it, it's kind of in the middle of moving. So at that point, if I press the spacebar, nothing should happen. And we'll see how that's, that's gonna shake out in a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna also give my bullet a state. So so we're gonna have two states, ready, which means ready to fire and fire means the bullet is firing so it is actually moving at that point so when we start the game the bullet state equals ready so then we need to create a function called fire bullet so what do we want to happen when the fire the bullet is firing so okay so what we need to do here is we need to take this variable and make make it into something called a where's the bullet state at uh, bullet state. We can make it into something called a global. 
uh, in Python and you know many other programming languages, we have something called local variables and global variables. So if a variable is defined inside of a function, it is a local variable only basically available to that function. If it is defined outside of a function, kind of in the main program like bullet state is, it is a global variable. Now in Python, global variables can be read. So I could say in this function, I could say print print bullet state, and it would know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you just want to read a, a, a variable, that's fine. But we might need to change the bullet state. So if we want to change it, we want to say that this bullet state is global. It means that any changes in this function are reflected here as well. Okay. So now, if we're going to fire our weapon, okay, when the space bar is pressed, okay, so let's say what we need to do is when we start it, we're going to say move the bullet to just above the player. So what we need to do is we need to get the x coordinate of the player, the y coordinate of the player, and we're going to set the bullet p position, x, comma, y. But we want that y to be plus 10. Or we could do it here, it doesn't matter. Whatever you think, whatever works for you. And then now we need to show the turtle. Okay, so let's hope that makes sense. So again, I'm skipping a few things right now because I want to show you something. But basically the thing we want to do is we want to move the bullet to just above the player. So we get the player's x coordinate, the player's y coordinate, and we add 10. And we set the position x, y. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Oh, got to do the, the uh, keyboard binding first. Turtle dot on key. So it's called fire bullet. And it's space. In this case, it's lowercase for some reason, not capitals. So let's try that out. Okay, so the, it's mo missing. So I push space, and there is my bullet. Okay, now it's not really doing anything. Okay, but every time I push space, it moves to, uh, you know, kind of the top of the, uh, the player. So now what we gotta do is we have to actually move the bullet. Okay, so it's inside of our main loop. Now just to show you what, how this would work, is we need to get the current y coordinate dot y core. We need to add the bullet speed. It's got to be same lowercase. Then bullet dot set y. Okay. So move the. So let's just try that. See what that looks like. Run in terminal. Okay. So now actually. Although you can't see the, the bullet right now because it's hidden, it's actually moving. It's probably way up and off the screen right now. But if I push the space key, it comes back, boom, shoots. Now you notice it goes off the screen. But now if you notice what's interesting here, so if I keep pushing the space, it keeps coming back. Okay, which doesn't really make it a challenging game. So we gotta do a couple things here. So we have to prevent the bullet from firing if it's already firing. And that's where bullet state comes in. And also, when it gets back to here, we have to reset it so that you can shoot again. Okay, so let's do those. So, the bullet state. So we only want to be able to fire the bullet, you know, up here we talked about that, if it is ready. So, if bullet state is ready, then we can do all these things. If it's not, we don't want to do those things. But what we also have to do is change the bullet state. So 
So because now we're going to be firing bullet state equals fire. Okay. So we push the space bar. We check the bullet state. If it's ready, we change it to fire. Get the player x coordinate, player y coordinate, move the bullet to the start and show it. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so I'm going to push space. Okay, it's going off the screen. Now if I push space, nothing happens because the bullet state is still in fire. Okay, so what we have to do, the same thing we've done before is collision checking or sorry, actually border border checking. So check to see if the bullet has gone to the top or reached the top, I guess. So if bullet dot y core is greater than again you can play around with the numbers, but 275 should be about where you want it to be. We're gonna hide turtle and we're gonna say bullet state equals ready. Okay, so let's run it. So it fires, boom, disappears, boom, fires, boom, disappears. Okay. So it works perfectly at this point. Now, what I would also add is move the bullet, um, just to make your code kind of a bit more efficient and not waste clock cycles. So we only want to move the bullet if the bullet state equals fire. If it's ready, we don't want to move the bullet. Okay, so let's try that again. Make sure everything's working fine. Okay, so it's working. Boom. And that is that. Okay. Close. Okay, so just to review real quick, um, this has gotten a bit more complicated. We've created a bullet, given it a speed. We're using something called state to control basically the behavior of the bullet. So in this case, when it starts out, it is ready to, to, to go. We've done keyboard binding, the space bar, to the function fire bullet. It checks to see if the bullet state is ready. And it's global because we might change it here. If it is ready, we switch it to fire. We update it. Move the bullet to just above the player using the player X and the player Y coordinate. Then we show the turtle. Down our main loop, if the bullet is in the state of firing, then we add the speed to the Y coordinate. And if it's gone to the top, the bullet coordinate is greater than 275, we hide the turtle and set the bullet state to ready so that it can be fired again. So that is that. And now what we need to do is we need to figure out how to get the bullet to actually destroy the enemy. So that's going to be an interesting lesson coming up.